welcome back to Smith Coding and Design. So today we're going to go ahead and continue our stainless steel widget. We're going to finish up all the tool paths in Op 1. So with that being said, let's go ahead and begin. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to go to our 2D contour. And again, we're going to finish around the part. So for that, I am going to use a Haas 5 flute end mill. And the reason why I'm not using the six flute end mill, again, it has chip breakers on it, so it's really meant for roughing. I'm gonna get a beautiful surface finish and it has a radius on the nose or the tip of the end mill where I want this to be flat. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and select that one fourth five flute end mill. Now I do find that this end mill is very particular and you wanna use the Haas recommended feeds and speeds for this particular end mill or you will run into trouble um, so with that being said i want my surface feet to be at 260 feet per minute and then i want my feed per tooth to be at one thousand two tenths all right there we go so that puts us at uh you know 3,900 RPM and about 23, about 24 uh, inches per minute. So we'll, we'll just say 260 surface feet and 24 uh, inches per minute for finishing. So what I'm going to go do now is I'm going to go ahead and select the geometry. So I'm going to zoom in here. So what we're going to do is we're going to come in and we're going to uh, basically just finish the outside contour of our part so what I want to do now is go to heights and now if you if you remember that when I did my 3d adaptive clearing I actually went 50 thousandths below the bottom of the part and I left 10 thou stock to leave so what I want to do here is I want to go minus 40 thou Point zero four. Sorry, it's sort of easy to fat finger this. Let me move this out of the way so my face isn't there. So again, we went fifty thousandths below the material for our 3D adaptive clearing, and we left ten thousandths stock to leave. So minus fifty thousandths plus ten thousandths gives us the minus forty thousandths. So that's what I'm going to use on my bottom height here. The next thing I'm going to do is go into passes. I like to have a 50 thousandths finish overlap and I like to go ahead and select repeat finishing passes just so it does sort of a skim pass at the end to make sure that, uh, you know, if there's anything left over, if there is any tool deflection, uh, we sort of clean that up. I'm going to enable smoothing and feed optimization. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to linking. And what I like to do is lead in in the front some here somewhere where I can see my tool enter the cut. So I'm going to go to preferred lead in position and then I'm going to select sort of right here at this corner to lead in. And that should be everything. I'm going to press OK and I'm going to go to simulate. And what I want to make sure here, so when I begin the lead in, I want to make sure that the tip of my tool isn't cutting anything on the bottom. This should line up perfectly with how I did my adaptive clearing with the stock to leave. So there we go. And you'll notice I'm not removing any material down here from the tip. So we're not touching the floor with our end mill. We are simply removing the material from the side. So I'm just going to walk around it using the timeline here. So everything looks beautiful. I'm happy with that. So now I'm going to exit. Go ahead and go back to home view. And so now we're just going to go ahead and finish the pocket in the center here. So we're going to use that same exact end mill, but we are going to go uh, to 2D pocket. Again, we're going to go select our quarter inch five flute and mill from Haas select. We're going to change this to 260 surface feet per minute. 
which is again recommended by Haas. And then we're going to drop this to 1,000, 1.2,000, 1,000 tenths. Uh, there we go. Now for our geometry, we're going to select the bottom of our bore here for heights. So this is going to be fine. We want to be at our, actually going to go to model top for our top height. And then about the bottom height is our selected contour, which is the bottom of the bore. So that is fine. Uh, for passes here, we do not want to leave any stock. We want to enable finishing passes. We want one finishing pass, and we want that to be at 10 thou. That's fine. This is complaining that our finishing feed rate is higher than our normal feed rate. So what I'm going to do here is if you remember from this tab, it was right around 24 inches per minute. So I'm just going to go ahead and make that 23. There we go, it's gonna stop complaining. Again, I like to use a finishing overlap of 50 thousandths. So what's nice about Fusion is you can come here and you can just go ahead and say, save that as a user default, um, which is what I will do. I have my finishing step over defaulted at 10 thou, which is what I always use. So I'm going to leave that there. So that should be everything. I'll go ahead and enable smoothing, feed optimization, even though we probably don't need it here. The other thing is in linking, if you want to save yourself uh, a lot of time, if you notice you're cutting a lot of air when you helical in, if you go here to your ramp clearance angle, or sorry, your ramp clearance height, I default that to 20 thousandths. Okay, so that should be everything there. I'm going to go ahead and press OK, and that is going to do it for finishing our pocket. So you'll notice here, Again, I'm wasting a lot of time cutting air, which is not what I want to do. So that means that I have my top height wrong. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to edit. Sorry, not edit the tool. I want to go to edit and I want to... It's hard to see from the way that I have my camera. So we're just going to double click it. Pop it up that way. All right. So... What I want to do is go to heights and instead of it being um, the highest of selected, I'm actually going to go to selection. I'm going to click on the bottom of the bore and I know that I left 10 thousandths when I did my 3D adaptive clearing. So all I'm going to do is go ahead and make my offset um, 10 thousandths uh, just so I start above the material. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And now you'll notice there we are no longer cutting air. So if we go ahead and simulate that, or I should say we're no longer cutting all that air, we greatly reduce the time it took to get into the cut. So what we do want to do is we want to make sure that we're not plunging into any material. So that is good. Um, let me go back to the home view. And then we're just going to do a smooth helical motion into the material, and then we're gonna go ahead, finish the bottom, and then we're gonna finish our sidewalls. So that is it for finishing our center bore. Uh, the next thing that we're going to do is go ahead and do uh, the O-ring slot. So we're gonna use an eighth inch end mill, so we'll do that next. Go ahead and click exit, go on home view. All right, so I am going to go to 2D slot. And then I am going to select a Haas 4 flute 1 8 inch end mill. This does have a corner radius on it. I'm going to go ahead and select. And we are going to use the recommended speeds and feeds. So I'm going to be at 200 surface feet. And the inches per tooth is going to be right at 8 tenths. So let's see if I can edit that. Okay. So everything there looks good. We're gonna to go to our geometry. I'm just gonna select the bottom of the slot here. Zoom back out, heights. Go with model top. Bottom is our selected contour. Everything there does look fine to me. Um, the next thing that I want to do is I want to make sure that I repeat finishing, finishing passes. So what we're going to do is we're going to ramp into this 
O-ring groove slowly. And then when we reach the bottom, we don't want to stop. We want to go ahead and do another, uh, you know, full rotation or full. We want to go all the way around the slot again, just to make sure that we clean up any material that we left over during the ramp. Sort of give us a good surface finish there. I'm going to enable smoothing and feed optimization, even though we may not need them. Um, the next thing that I'm going to do is again, we want to make sure that we are ramping into this. I'm using a um, two degree ramp. And again, if you look at the, the recommended speeds and feeds of this end mill, Haas says it, that it can do a slot at 1D or one diameter. So we are going to make our maximum ramp step down at the diameter of the tool, which is 125 thousandths. We're going to go ahead and click OK. I'm beautiful. And what I want to do now is just go ahead and simulate. And we want to make sure that we are just doing a smooth ramp into this. Make sure we're not plunging into the material. So that looks good. Everything looks fine there. And again, um, you know, as I sort of drag through this timeline, we want to make sure we do one final pass along the slot to clean it up. There we go. So that is all there is to the slot. The next thing we're going to do is a series of chamfers. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to go ahead and 2D chamfer. I'm going to go ahead and select a 1 8 inch chamfer again from Haas tooling. You'll notice I'm using a lot of Haas tooling uh, on this typically because it's it's rather cheap and I get next day shipping. I also like to use a lot of helical end mills and Harvey tool uh, just for, you know, specialized end mills that I may need for long reach, etc. or micro 1 16th, 1 32nd, etc. I'll get that from Harvey tool. All right, anyway, moving on to our 1 8 inch chamfer. There we go. We're going to select that. Now we're going to go ahead and look at our passes here. Everything looks fine. 8,000 RPM. We are just, again, at the recommended feeds and speeds from Haas. Uh, 1.2 thou per tooth, which gives us a feed rate of 19.2 inches per minute. Going to our geometry, I'm going to chamfer both sides of the internal bore as long along with uh, both sides, both edges of the slot there. Heights, everything should be fine. Again, we can go model top instead of stock top. Our bottom height is our selected contour. That all looks good. And now what I'm going to do here in the passes I just go ahead and look at um, my tip offset. I think if I go to edit expression, I think I'm using, it looks like half of the flute length. We could probably go more than that. I have my uh, default chamfer width value at uh, 13,000. So that's what I'm gonna use. Um, again, probably don't need to enable smoothing and feed optimization but I like to enable those, especially on any type of, you know, finishing tool path. Again, everything looks good here. I'm going to go ahead and press OK. And that is it for our chamfering with our 1 8 inch chamfer. We'll go ahead and simulate it. All right, so that looks beautiful. Nothing to complain about. So we'll go ahead and exit. And now what I want to do is go ahead and spot drill and then drill these holes um, for our quarter 20 threads. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and spot drill. So I typically do not spot softer materials, but if it is a harder material such as uh, steel, I will go ahead and spot drill. I always use carbide drills even for aluminum. Um, so with that being said, I'm going to go here to drilling. We're going to go ahead and select our drill. I'm going to go ahead and select 140 degree spot drill. Uh, this drill is from Char's tool, Char Tools. I do use Char's a lot. Let me, let me know if you guys like Char's. Leave some comments down below. So let's go ahead and select that. 
And what I'm going to do is sort of use the uh, manufacturing default here. So I'm going to go 100 SFM and we want to be at 3000 per rev. I'm going to go ahead and click geometry. We're going to select one hole and then to save ourselves time, we are going to go select same diameter. And again, we're going to save that as a user default, just so I don't have to do it again. For some reason, Fusion 360 updated the other day and some of my defaults have disappeared. So that's why you're not seeing that already defaulted. Um, now what we have to do is be very, very careful because the if we go here to our drilling rapid out, that is going to default in terms of height to the top height being the whole top, which is what we want, but the bottom height being the whole bottom. We do not want to try to send a spot drill all the way through our material. So what we're going to do is select whole top and we are going to go down 30 thousandths and we are not going to put the tip of the tool through anymore. And you'll notice I fat fingered that. So that needs to be 30 thousandths, not three inches. Um, there we go. So that's what we want to do. Drilling wrap it out. Everything there looks beautiful. So now what I'm going to do is again simulate. This should be really quick. Again, I do spot drill harder materials. It can be annoying sometimes. I have a 12 tool umbrella, so that extra tool being a spot drill can sometimes be annoying. Uh, you know, especially if you're you're trying to make room for an additional tool. You know, back when I had the Tormach 770 and I didn't have a tool changer, you know, <laughs> it's it's kind of funny when you go to a tool changer just how quickly you can fill up 12 positions. Let's put it that way. So I'm glad I have a tool changer, but only having 12 positions does become annoying sometimes. You have to, you know, rough and finish with the same tool or play those games occasionally. All right, so moving on. So now that we've spot drilled, what we want to go ahead and and do is finish our drilling. So we're just gonna drill again. Uh, this time we are going to select a kinemetal go drill. This is 0 0.201. We're gonna select it. And again, we are just going to use the recommended feeds and speeds. So from kinemetal's website, I got an SFM of 100 inches per minute and 3000 rev for 316 stainless steel. Uh, so that is what we're going to do. I'm gonna go ahead and again, go to geometry, and there we go. And now that we had our select same diameter defaulted, everything is good there. Moving on to heights. Here we do want the whole top and the whole bottom, and we want to break the tip through and go an extra 50 thousandths. I normally do that just so that I give myself room to thread mill for chip evacuation and to make sure that I don't run into anything at the bottom of the hole and break a thread mill. All right, so with that being said, um, let's go ahead and press OK. And we'll go ahead and simulate. This is going to go rather quickly again. Boom, 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 boom. And that is it as far as our drilling goes. Now what we want to do is go ahead and chamfer around the holes. Uh, that way we got, you know, a nice countersink there so we can easily start our screws going into our thread. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to 2D chamfer and again this time I'm going to select a quarter inch chamfer tool. So let me find it. Where are you at? Moss quarter inch chamfer. I'm going to select OK. <clears throat> now I am going to do this in two passes. So the first thing I'm going to do is go to geometry we're going to select our geometry. Our heights is fine. We can select model top instead of stock top if we want, but our bottom height is our selected contour, which is uh, the outside diameter of our hole. I'm going to go into passes here. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this a 60 thousandths chamfer but I'm going to do it in two passes. So I'm going to go 30 thousandths. Uh, my chamfer tiff offset, I believe again, I do have this. Let me go to edit expression as just half the flute length. 
Uh, if you watch any of the NYCNC videos, he does have, you know, John goes over an equation you can put in here that gets it farther up along the tip of the tool. I just ran into some issues where I was getting some burrs left on the edge of my chamfer. Uh, so for right now, I'm just using, you know, 50%. Sometimes I'll go 80 or 90%. It just, it just depends. Um, so now moving on here. Again, everything looks fine. We'll change our lead in sweep angle to 45 degrees and we'll press OK. And now what I'm going to do is simulate. Beautiful. And now I'm going to do that same thing again. And I'm going to do that by just going duplicate. And everything. Sorry, I can't. The way my camera is sitting, I can't. I, I try to edit, but I can't see. So we'll just double click again. All right. So what I'm going to do now, again, our geometry is the same. Heights are the same. The only thing that's going to change now is our chamfer width. I'm going to go ahead and make that 60 thousandths. Press OK. So we went in, we did a 30 thousandths chamfer, and then we opened it up again. Um, just so that we don't break our end mill, we're, we're taking that in two steps. And now what we're going to do is we are going to go ahead and thread mill. So I'm going to go to 2D, thread. We're going to select our tool. So for thread mills, I buy all of my thread mills from Online Carbide just because they offer a good price and good performance for the dollar. So I'm going to go ahead and select um, my thread mill. You notice here I have a quarter 20 and M6 just because you can use these single point thread mills for different threads, various sizes, metric and imperial. Uh, so now what I'm going to do is go ahead and look at my feeds and speeds here. They look good. So I'm going 8,000 RPM, um, one thou per tooth, which gives us a feed rate of 32 inches per minute. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is go to geometry. Again, I'm going to select one hole, make sure select same diameter is selected. And we're going to save that as a user default in terms of height, hold top, hold bottom. That is perfect. And in terms of passes, I'm going to go to multiple passes. I'm going to go a 10,000 step over two passes. And then I'm going to do a repeat pass uh, just so that we do that skim again to sort of clean any chips that might be stuck in the threads. All right, so that all looks good there. Linking, everything looks good. We're gonna go ahead and press OK. And there, our thread mill is done. And now what I will point out here is if I go to simulate, you're gonna see some red probably, or maybe not. And you know what? I realized what I just forgot, the pitch diameter offset. So I, let's go edit this. So I do usually, use the spreadsheet from uh, NYCNC. Sorry, I, I did it again. I want to <laughs> edit the toolpath, not the tool. I do use this spreadsheet from NYCNC to calculate the initial pitch diameter offset. And then I usually refine that and save it off in the spread cell sheet. So next time I know what I want. And I happen to know that for the online carbide thread mill I use on my Silo X7, I want the pitch diameter offset to be 0 0.057 or 57 thousandths. So now I'm going to click OK, and now everything should be fine. Simulate. We might see some red here. I'll explain that if we do. So we do see some red. And it's because when you go to define the tool, it it's not giving me... I would have to go make sort of a custom shaft for this so the shaft on this tool is much smaller than what's shown here so we're really not going to collide and it, it's going to flag it right here as colliding but really that's not going to happen because the the shaft diameter there or the neck diameter is much smaller than what's being shown and there we go so that all looks good again exception for this thread mill when it comes to you know, colliding with the stock. But again, this is why you should always simulate and check because in your case, 
uh, that might not be an exception. All right, so everything is good there. So the last thing that we need to do is go ahead and do a 3D blend tool path to finish the fillet on the outside of our part. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so here we go. All I'm going to do is go to 3D. And again, I'm going to use a blend. I'm gonna go select a quarter inch four flute ball end mill from Haas Tooling. <clears throat> and I'm going to speed this up quite a bit. I'm gonna leave the SFM at 260, but I'm going to put my, my uh, cutting feed rate right about 50, 55 inches per minute. So there we go. That's about seven, sorry, 1.7 thou per tooth. Uh, the next thing that we're going to do is go to geometry. So for the driving surface, I'm going to go around here and select our fillet. Sorry, a little painful. There we go, everything selected. And now for the driving curves, I'm gonna select the top and bottom contour around that fillet. So everything there looks good. Top height and bottom height's the fine. Change this to model top. You could leave it at stock top if you really wanted. Not gonna matter. Um, we're gonna go to passes. I'm gonna enable smoothing, feed optimization. And for our step over, I am going to go 10 thou step over. All right, so everything there looks fine. No stock to leave. All right, everything's good. I'm gonna go ahead and press okay. And so that is going to finish op one. So what we'll do now is we'll get ready and we will transition over to op two. Actually, before I do that, what we'll do is we'll go ahead and do a few inspection probing routines. So <clears throat> let's go ahead and assume Okay, we, everything went smoothly, uh, we finished op one, we have a complete part, and now what we wanna do is go ahead and inspect our part. So what we can do is we can go back into inspection, again, use in-process probing. So I'm gonna go to probing, I'm gonna go ahead and select my silver CNC probe, I'm going to go into geometry, and now what I'm going to do is select the geometry I want to probe. So let's say we want to probe the outside, so again, I'm going to select the outside of our part, all of the faces on the outside. So again, it's going to give us that rectangular boss probing routine. And now all that we need to do, if you're using the, the probing routines that are available on GitHub to everyone that I helped create, all you have to do is go to actions and select print results. So what that's going to do is it's, when it comes in and it probes your part, it's just going to create a file in the LNC controller. Again, this is specific to LNC and it's gonna list those probe dimensions and it's not going to adjust any of your work offsets. So we don't need to override anything because uh, we're not trying to reset our work coordinate offsets. All we're trying to do is use what our work coordinate, use the work coordinates that we already machined our part with and just come through and inspect it. So we just print results. It's going to create a file and it's going to put the result in. So it's going to give you your length and width of the part. So that's it. We're going to click OK. And then we are going to duplicate Control D and then we are going to edit. And this time, what we wanna do is measure the inside bore. So all we would have to do is press that. And then again, we just wanna make sure that we have print results. So that way we're printing all of our results of this measurement into a text file on the LNC controller. I'm gonna press okay. Um, so now what if we wanted to do something like measure uh, the Z depth of this bore? Well, we could again, duplicate duplicate control D edit let's go to geometry and all I'm going to do is click on this face and when you do that you can move the probe so I want to keep it away from any of these edges here 
I'm gonna find a nice flat spot away from away from the hole and also away from the edge. So that looks like a nice safe spot to probe in Z. Um, so I'm gonna press OK. So that's going to give us this Z position. And now what we're gonna do is probe at the bottom of the bore here. So I'm gonna duplicate again. Go to edit. And then I'm going to go to geometry, and this time I'm just going to select the inside here. Now you'll notice it automatically defaulted to uh, probing a circular bore. I, I don't want to probe a hole or a bore, I just want to do the Z surface. Um, so I'm going to click OK. And so now what that's going to do is it's going to put the probe position of this face and the probed position of this face in that text file. If you subtract the two, then you will get the depth that this bore is or this hole. Um, so that's it for op one. Hopefully that was interesting. Hopefully, you've, you know, maybe learn something new. If you're new to CNC machining, hopefully this helped, especially when you're doing things such as in process probing with respect to a zero point system. So now what we'll do is we'll go ahead and jump into op two. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and end here today with all of the tool paths for OP1 complete. In the next video, we're gonna go ahead and get into the OP2 tool paths. We'll blaze the hat material off the backside of our part. We'll then go ahead and face it and then finish with a chamfer. And then we should have a complete widget. So stay tuned for that and I will catch everyone in the next video. Mm -hmm.